Okay, are we all set? Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our eLotus webinar today. My name is Donna, and I will be your host and your moderator. For over two decades, eLotus has been your trusted source for TCM continued education for acupuncturists. We offer the largest selection of online CU courses with over 3,000 CE hours. If you are new to eLotus, remember to sign up for an eLotus account to receive a free one CU course as a welcome gift. This offer is valid for new accounts only. All right, so let's do a few housekeeping before we start the webinar. If you are a big fan of learning new acupuncture points, visit eLotus Core, our un ultimate free resource guide for Master Dong's acupuncture. Here you'll be able to see needling demos, learn indications, locations, and more. Plus, you can also view traditional points on our eLotus Core website. Just like Master Dong's acupuncture, you can learn indication and locations of traditional points. Okay, that takes care of everything. Here's a quick introduction to Dr. Raman Kapoor. Dr. Kapoor started acupuncture clinical practice cl in 1982 in Delhi. He has achieved excellent results in the treatment of many chronic diseases and is the chairperson of the Department of Acupuncture at Sir Ganga Ram Hospital, which he started 21 years ago. He is currently the vice president, vice chairman of the Apex Committee of Acupuncture formed by the Government of India to suggest detailed guidelines for promotion and regulation of acupuncture in India. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and welcome Dr. Raman Kapoor. And you can go Hi. ahead, I'll go ahead and stop my share here and you can share your PowerPoint. Hi Donna, uh, a very good morning to you in the US and a very good evening to uh, all my participants from India. It's 10.30 p.m. in India at the moment and uh, it's a great opportunity for me uh, to be the first uh, uh, doctor to have been invited by your prestigious e-Lotus to do a presentation on a very interesting subject, which uh, a lot of you uh, must not have uh, heard about. And uh, I would like to uh, delve on a very interesting uh, subject today, which is known as prickling uh, neurostimulation technique. Uh, I presently uh, head the Department of Medical Acupuncture, as you already told, uh, at the uh, Sir Gangaram Hospital, and I'm an active uh, practitioner of acupuncture for the last 38 years in New Delhi, India. So first of all, I would like to thank Dr. Nagata, who is a neurosurgeon in Japan, and he's the originator of the PNST system, from whom uh, me and my wife both learned this therapy, and who encouraged me to use it to treat my patients and to promote it amongst my colleagues. Now, what is PNST? PNST, also known as the prickling nerve stimulation technique, is a very simple but a very effective method. The simplicity of the treatment in itself sometimes makes a person who is a practitioner feel that will it work? But my experience of the last one and a half years that I've been practicing this system tells me that it works wonders. Not only is it a very simple method of treatment, but it has also got great results. So in this, we first of all identify the area of sympathetic harm. Once we identify the sympathetic area or sympathetic harm area, then PNST treatment involves applying a quick prickling stimulation to the surface of the skin, to the surface of the skin uh, of the affected areas of sympathetic harm with a pointed tool. Now, uh, when Professor Nagata started the system of uh, PNST, he initially started by using a simple toothpick. So what he would do is he would just uh, take a toothpick and prickle uh, sharp, because we all know the toothpick has got a sharp point. So he would use a toothpick to prickle at specific points. And over a period of time, once he developed the entire system of therapy, he devised this uh, uh, tool, which is known as the PNST uh, tool. And it's known as the PNST probe also. And it has got, if you can see on the uh, screen, it has got a sharp point at the tip 
and it is made of titanium and this is what is now uh, used by practitioners all over who learn the system for treatment of uh, all uh, conditions with PNST. Now, what is sympathetic harm? Sympathetic harm refers to disorders and diseases which are caused by stressed sympathetic nerves. Now, sympathetic harm can be present at the level of the central nervous system, at the level of the cranial nerves, as well as at the level of the peripheral spinal nerve dermatomes. As an example, uh, I would like to tell you, suppose if a patient has got Parkinson's disease, then the sympathetic harm in this disease is at the substantia nigra, which is located in the midbrain. Similarly, in chronic diseases, the sympathetic harm is at the level of the autonomic nervous system, which is located in the brain stem. And this can be influenced through the trigeminal nerve. And a common condition which we treat regularly in our practice of acupuncture in sciatica, the sympathetic harm is at the level of the L4, L5 and S1 peripheral spinal nerve dermatomes. Now, what is a dermatome? A dermatome actually is an area of the skin which is supplied by a single spinal or cranial nerve. Our body has got 30 dermatomes, including one on the face. Now, a dermatome chart is actually a schematic chart showing the area each dermatome covers and the location of its specific nerve root. This is used for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. For example, if suppose uh, I was to have uh, numbness in my thumb, now, we all know by our knowledge of anatomy that the affected dermatome in this case is a C6 because the sixth cervical nerve controls the thumb. Now, this is a dermatome chart, as you can see on your screens. Uh, there are uh, the left and right. On the uh, screen, you can see the anterior presentation and the posterior uh, uh, presentation of the body. Uh, anteriorly, you can see the C2, C3, C4, C5 dermatomes are supplying the anterior part of the neck and chest. And C5, C6, C7, and C8 are supplying our uh, anterior part of the upper arm and the forearm till the hand. The uh, T1 to T12 dermatomes, they are supplying the anterior chest wall and the abdomen. The dermatomes from L1 to L4 are supplying our uh, anterior thigh. From L5 till S1, we can see anteriorly, the dermatomes are supplying the uh, uh, lower legs. And uh, a part of the la uh, anterior lateral part of the leg is also being supplied by the S1 dermatome. Similarly, when you see the posterior aspect of our body, posteriorly, when you see the C2, C3, C4, C5, and C6, dermatomes are supplying the upper part of the neck, the C7 and C8, C6, C7, C8 dermatomes are supplying the posterior uh, aspect of the arm, upper arm and the forearm right till the hand. Then the T1 to T12 dermatomes are covering up the uh, upper and the mid back and the L1 to L5 dermatomes are covering up the lower back and the S1 to S4 dermatomes, S5 dermatomes rather, are covering up our sacral area. And from there, if we see the supply line to the thighs, back of the thigh, back of the calf and the sole of our foot is distributed along the L4, L5, L1, L2, L3, L4, L5, S1, S2 and so on. So we are actually showing a schematic presentation of the entire dermatomes as they supply our body. Now we come to the acupuncture points on the back because most of the people today or our colleagues who are listening to this webinar are practitioners of acupuncture. Now, we all know by our knowledge of acupuncture for so many years that the acupuncture points on the back are located on the spine as well as on the side at regular intervals. The midline acupuncture points are the one which are located in the DU channel and the back acupuncture points and the dermatome charts, which Professor Nagata developed with his experience 
seems to overlap at the DU channel and the UB channel points. And Dr. Nagata studied the distribution of the acupuncture point from the viewpoint of the dermatomes and confirmed that major acupuncture points are in fact lined up along the nerve pathway in a dermatome. Now, this is the PNST chart. And this PNST chart is what was developed by Dr. Nagata, which integrated the dermatome chart and the acupuncture chart with additional points, which covers all the dermatomes. And he called this approach of his as the dermatome theory. So what he said was that below each of the cervical vertebrae, the thoracic vertebrae, the lumbar vertebrae and the sacral vertebrae, there is a point from where a dermatome originate. And he called this as the spinal zero point. So say you'll say zero point of C3, zero point of C4 and so on and so forth. Rather than calling it as dew channel point, he will call it as the zero points. Now the basic PNST treatment can be divided into three parts. The uh, clinical uh, aspect of it now I'm coming to, which will make you more excited about the therapy also and make you also may, uh, uh, understand how this treatment is done. Because I would like to uh, cover up as much uh, as possible of the uh, uh, theoretical as well as the practical aspects in a short period of time of one hour so that you get to know and understand this therapy. And as soon as you finish this webinar, you are almost ready with a toothpick in your hand to start prickling your patients till the time that you actually uh, have a proper tool with you, which is the PNST tool, which also we have now been able to uh, uh, manufacture in India also. And uh, we are able to uh, give you more of these tools also, so that once you uh, are interested, we can also send it to, to you. Because the PNST tool is a much more efficacious. Why? Because it really gives you that actual pressure which is required to prickle at, an, at a point as compared to a toothpick. But initially when you start practicing, you can use a toothpick and also you will be able to see good results. Now, as I said to you, there are three uh, uh, parts of our treatment. The one is the basic PNST. The next aspect is the dermatomal PNST. And the third is the PNST at additional points. Now, what is the mechanism of the basic PNSD treatment? The basic PNSD treatment induces a desirable parasympathetic response, which leads to a balancing of the autonomic nervous system. So I must tell you that this is a very interesting aspect, which we all need to understand that actually it is the autonomic nervous system imbalance, which leads to a lot of diseases. And Whatever we do with classical acupuncture, we are still not able to get commensurate results because we are not able to induce a desirable parasympathetic response, which leads to a balancing of the autonomic nervous system. Whereas I have found myself that once you start using this simple tool and do prickling, the good part of this treatment is it is not as painful as needling. And a lot of pa our patients sometimes are afraid of needles. So this is a great treatment for patients who are needle apprehensive, although the feeling is just as if you are actually prick, uh, pricking a needle, but it is not that painful. And it is very quick. It does not take a long time. So the amount of time that a practitioner spends on doing a PNSC treatment on one patient will never be more than five to seven minutes. That's all. You will not require more than that time. And you can see the improvement or the results within the period of five to seven minutes. The patient can be made to see, particularly in uh, acute conditions, you can see the response almost instantaneously. So it is indicated for treating conditions like autoimmune disorders, metabolic disorders, chronic pain syndromes like fibromyalgia, stress, today one of the biggest uh, uh, problem all over the world globally, psychosomatic disorders and neurological disorders. So it is a, a, a method of therapy which can be used to treat a large spectrum of diseases. Now, what are the areas of the P 
PNST treatment. Now, this is the basic protocol. So I am going to, as I said to you, divide my treatment protocol into three zones. Now, this is the very basic treatment, which we will almost always be doing in all patients who come to us. The, uh, the other treatments which we do uh, would be done uh, uh, according to the patient's condition or the patient's symptomatic presentation, what are his ma major issues, and accordingly, we'll decide the protocol for that. But the basic PNSD treatment is done in all our patients. Now, the basic PNSD treatment uh, involves uh, uh, the prickling with that tool which I showed you, and again, show that tool to you. This is done at 12 jingwell points on the fingers of the hand, on the face points, which are around the eyes, nose and mouth, and on the head points, which are located on the top of the head, on the side of the head, and on the back of the head. Now, the basic PNSG treatment of the fingers, which I said to you, we will be prickling the acupuncture points, which are located at the root of the fingernails, and what do we do? Uh, what do we achieve by this? We encourage the autonomic nervous system to shift towards a healthier balance. So we will be prickling the points lung 11, LI1, large intestine 1, PC9 or pericardium 9, heart uh, Senjo 1 or triple warmer 1 also, heart 9 and small intestine 1. And we will be doing the prickling on both the hands. So in all, we'll be prickling at 12 acupuncture points. Then on your left-hand side of the screen, you can see there is a Jerin's chart. This is something which all of us had learned, learned about as medical students, that the uh, skin of the face is controlled by the nucleus at the brain stem, where the autonomic nervous system is located. So the trigeminal nucleus is at the brain stem. So when a stimulus on the facial skin is given with this tool, it gets directly transmitted to the brain stem and then onto the midbrain and from there onto the brain. So thus a prickling stimulation at, uh, on the facial skin can influence the autonomic nervous system and the hormones. And we all know very well from our knowledge that the autonomic nervous system controls our body temperature, our appetite, our libido, our sleep, and our immunity. And we also know that the vagus nerve from the brain stem regulates our internal organs, such as the heart, the lungs, the stomach, the intestines, the liver, and the pancreas. Thus, the face is the area where we can stimulate the autonomic nervous system. Now, I would like to enumerate in the basic PNSG treatment, what are the points on the face which we will be prickling. At the end of the uh, uh, presentation today, I'll be showing you a short video also, which will be showing uh, how I do the prickling with this uh, uh, tool, the PNSG probe, which we call it, at all those acupuncture points, which I am talking about just now. So the acupuncture points which you will be prickling around the eyes will be gallbladder 1, triple warmer 23, UYAO, gallbladder 14, UB2, stomach 2, stomach 2.5, stomach 3, and UB1. Around the nose, the points to be prickled are the extra point bitong, large intestine 20, small intestine 18, and DU25. Around the mouth, the points which we prickle are the DU26, the DU26.5, the large intestine 19, stomach 4, REN24, a point just below stomach 5, and SI17. As you can see on the uh, figure on the left side of the screen, these are all points on nerve roots. So when uh, we have a sort of a, a setup with the e-lotus and we do hope that we will have that very soon and we plan to do a, a weekend webinar with them on PNSD, I will definitely be doing a lot of uh, 
practical demonstrations on patients where we can show you how PNSD treatment can be done. And we will also be then detailing to you uh, uh, exactly which particular nerve root are we actually prickling because these are very approximate. That's why we are, because your basic knowledge is of acupuncture, so it becomes much more easier for you to prickle at these points because you have a knowledge of the location of these acupuncture points. But these points are uh, located on specific nerve endings and the, the trigeminal nerve which supplies our face has got three branches and these points are located on specifically on all those three branches. So obviously you can see those nerve roots as uh, they are shown on that diagram on the face. And we will be obviously going into much more detail to explain to you exactly which branch, the buccal branch or the lingual branch, which branch are we prickling when we are using a particular point. Now we come to the head. Now, when, when we do prickling on the scalp, stimulating the scalp leads to a parasympathetic response in the brain. And it also causes the activation of the diencephalic pituitary system. And we all know this is a very important aspect of uh, getting a parasympathetic response because this helps uh, in a lot of diseases. The basis of this presumption is the improvement which is observed in patients whose diseases are dependent on steroid hormones. And you know, we get a lot of chronic patients in our practice. And a lot of these patients are not getting resolved with even classical acupuncture. So I have found such patients do very well when we use the PNSC treatment. One, because it is simple to use. Two, it is not that painful as needling. And three, the acceptance with the patients with this type of treatment is much, much higher. So with PNST on the scalp, I have been successfully treating diseases which are steroid dependent, such as rheumatism, collagen disorders, bronchial asthma, hay fever, atopic allergies, ulcerative colitis, and others. Now I come to the uh, side of the head. So which are the points which we are going to prickle on the side of the head? First, we covered the points uh, on the front. And now I'm going to cover the points on the side of the head. So the acupuncture points which are covered on the side of the head are the gallbladder 10, 12.2, the Senjo points, uh, 20, gallbladder 8 and gallbladder 9. Uh, the stomach channel points which we are covering are the uh, stomach 8, gallbladder 4, 5 and 6. The uh, gallbladder 20, 12.1, gallbladder 11, and gallbladder 12. <clears throat> then the uh, acupuncture points on the top of the head, which will be prickling, will be the acupuncture points DU20, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 and 2.5 uh, centimeter, 3 centimeter lateral to these points are the gallbladder 15, 16, 17, 17.5 and 18. Then on the back of the head, uh, I will not repeat the uh, points which are on the side of the head because we already done them. On the back of the head, the only points which will prickle will be the DU 17, 18 and 19 and three centimeter lateral to these points are the points gallbladder 18, 18.5 and 18.8. Now we come to the uh, dermatomal PNSC treatment. So as I said to you, first was the basic PNSC treatment, which you already uh, did it. And now we come to the dermatomal PNSC treatment where you will be pickling the actual dermatomes which are getting affected in a particular disease. So the dermatomes on the back of the body are divided into six parts. We start treating the patient at the spinal root of the affected dermatome. Say for example, it's a very simple example, you get a patient with knee pain. So we all know this possible sympathetic harm lies in the dermatomes L3 to S2. You can clearly see on, on the figure on your 
left hand side that these dermatome which supplies our knee are the dermatomes L3 to S2. So what will you do? You will prickle the zero point at the spinal nerve root in these dermatomes and this is a very effective treatment. And what are, where are the zero points? They are located in the midline as I said to you, exactly in the DU channel. So you'll be doing prickling at the dermatomes L3, L4, L5, S1 and S2, which are the ones which are supplying our knee joint. And if necessary, we also apply PNSD treatment along the nerve pathways which supply the knee. I'll be coming to that also. Now, additional PNSD treatment. Now, depending on the patient's presenting symptoms and diagnosis, additional acupuncture points which are located along the peripheral nerve pathways are also prickled. So this would be the third step. So step one was the basic PNSD treatment. Step two was the dermatomal treatment. And step three was the additional PNSD treatments. Now, in the additional PNSD treatment, I would like to share a few of the treatment protocols with you so that you can actually start using these protocols right away uh, after you have completed this webinar. And it will make you much more confident. And once the results start coming in, your interest in this system will go very high. And I'm confident that you would like to learn more about this system in depth so that you can use it as a major part of your practice in acupuncture. So the additional PNSD treatment, in addition to the normal uh, PNSD treatment, which I've already told you, the basic PNSD treatment, the dermatomal PNSD treatment, uh, the additional ones for a condition like uh, thoracic outlet syndrome, the acupuncture point which you will be prickling will be stomach 12, stomach 13 and lung 2. Same way, the additional PNSD treatment which you can do for a patient who uh, comes to us for pain on the side of his neck, acute muscle spasm of the neck, the sternocleidomastoid muscle point uh, is located at the level of SI16. So you prickle that area. So it's a very simple prickling method wherein you prickle at the point which is most painful and then you just prickle around the point. That's all. I'll be showing you in the uh, uh, few slides uh, later how you are actually able to do that. Then the axillary nerve point for shoulder pain. So this is again very common problem which a lot of patients will come to us for. And uh, in addition to the basic PNSD treatment which I told you before as well as the dermatomal treatment, we will also be prickling these specific points for shoulder pain. And which are these points? Points. Or if you see, now I have uh, showing two, two diagrams to you. On the left side is the uh, supply line of the axillary nerve, which is at the back of the shoulder and just on the side of the shoulder blade. And the points to prickle when patient is complaining, these are the, on the left hand side, this is the area of the patient's complaint, the area where the patient is complaining of pain. And on the right side, I am showing the exact points where this patient's acupuncture points are to be prickled. And the points to you use are SI9, SI10, SI11, SI12, triple warmer 13, triple warmer 14, and LI16. Then the radial nerve point for pain, paralysis, and numbness along its pathway. Again, a very common problem which we see in our practice. On the left hand side, the figure shows clearly the area where the patient will be complaining of his symptoms, which could be either a pain or a numbness along that pathway. And we can all see that the, this is the pathway of the radial nerve. And on the right side, I'm showing the acupuncture point, triple warmer 13, which is to be prickled for treating this condition. Then we come to the uh, medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve point for forearm pain. If you see the figure above, it shows you the distribution on the palmer side uh, where exactly the patient is complaining of the pain and forearm pain. And the acupuncture points to be prickled are heart one, heart two, and heart three. But if you see the figure below very carefully, 
you will also see a dotted line which shows yellow dots when this is very important to understand because in addition to the acupuncture points heart 1 2 and 3 you will also be prickling along the nerve pathway of the medial antibrachial cutaneous nerve and this is very important to get commensurate results so you will be prickling along the entire pathway which i have shown in this figure then we come to the musculocutaneous nerve uh, point for pain paralysis and numbness along its pathway so if you see the figure on your left hand side of the screen you can see which is the area where exactly the patient is complaining of the pain or if he has got any numbness and on the right hand side the acupuncture point which we will be prickling will be mainly lung 5 but specifically in addition to that lung 5 you will also be prickling a zone and that zone is shown with the yellow dots so you'll be prickling exactly at lung 5 plus you'll be prickling along that zone now we come to the radial nerve point again a very important point in our practice because we get a lot of patients for wrist drop and we know on your left hand side the area where the patient has a problem area you can see uh, on the dorsum of the hand and the acupuncture points which you will be prickling for a radial nerve uh, problems will be the lung 7, lung 8 and lung 9. But in addition to that, you will also be prickling along the pathway of the radial nerve which is shown with the yellow dots. Then we come to the median nerve points for carpal tunnel syndrome. Now carpal tunnel syndrome is a problem which is widespread. A lot of patients will be coming to us also. A lot of patients come even after failed surgeries for a carpal tunnel syndrome with no results and uh, the relief having lasted very short. And most of the patients who come to us will complain of pain and particularly at night, they will complain of acute numbness developing. I, as a practitioner of acupuncture, developed it myself. And I tried classical acupuncture but it did not give me any benefits. Whatever benefit was there was just about 10 to 20%. And then I happened to visit Japan to learn this art from Professor Nagata. And I shared with him my problem. And since I was there for a week during my learning uh, experience with him, uh, I took every day one session with him. And to my amazement, I found that I, who was suffering for the last eight or nine months from this problem and my uh, nerve conduction studies had revealed a moderate to severe uh, nerve compression of the median nerve, started showing results within two days. To, uh, actually, it was amazing for me. Something which was not getting better with needles could get better with just prickling. No needles, just prickling. And the points which were used were uh, the basic PNSC treatment protocol plus the points pericardium 6 and 7 plus prickling along the yellow dotted lines which I have shown you here which is nothing else but the pathway of the median nerve. So my pain was gone and the best part was my numbness was gone. So after I came back to India I may have had just about uh, another uh, 5, 7, 10 sessions and after that it has been more than uh, two years, one and a half to two years, and I've never had that problem again. It's gone, totally gone. Now I uh, come to the ulnar nerve point for pain, paralysis, and numbness along the pathway of the ulnar nerve. The figure uh, above is clearly uh, demonstrating to you the area where the patient would be uh, having his symptoms or problems along the ulnar nerve pathway, which is uh, going to the little finger, the ring finger and half of the middle finger and the acupuncture points which needs to be prickled for this condition would be points heart 4, heart 5, heart 6, heart 7 as well as along the pathway of the ulnar nerve which is shown in the yellow dotted spots. So you'll do prickling locally also along the pathway. Then I come to the uh, lower limbs and uh, share with you the 
femoral nerve point, which uh, we are using for hip muscle spasm. We all know if you see on the left hand side of your screen, the femoral nerve supplies our antero medial side of the thigh. And the femoral nerve point which we will pickle is the point spleen 12. But in addition to that, you can also see I have made uh, uh, the yellow dots there also, which shows additionally that in addition to prickling at spleen 12, you will also uh, prickle along the pathway of the femoral nerve to get commensurate results. Then the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve point. Now this is a very, very important point because a lot of patients, as you can see on your right hand side, they complain of pain and uh, numbness along the lateral side of the thigh. And even meralgia parasthetica is a problem, which is very commonly seen. And we have no solution to offer also in Western medicine, but acupuncture can give and particularly PNST treatment, I would say, has given great results in my patients. And the results can be seen immediately. Now, that is the best part why I am uh, stressing again and again that more and more practitioners should learn this method of treatment because the results can be seen immediately and they are long lasting. So the acupuncture points to be prickled are gallbladder 27 and 28. In addition to that, if you see on your left hand side of the screen, the, uh, the dotted points in red are also to be prickled because that is the pathway of the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Then, a very common problem which we see in our practice is patients complaining of knee pain. So the we also call it a saphenous neuropathy. So the saphenous nerve point is what is being prickled in this condition for pain, paralysis, numbness along the medial side of the thigh, knee and the calf. So a lot of patients who will be having uh, knee arthritis pain will also be having sometimes stiffness uh, which is extending onto the medial side of the thigh and sometimes the pain which is shooting down on the medial side of the uh, leg. So the acupuncture points to be prickled in this case would be liver 9, medial zian, liver 8 and spleen 9. Next is the uh, common peroneal nerve point for sciatica and foot drop. And the acupuncture points, we can see on the left hand side, uh, the, uh, I've shown the actual uh, uh, present uh, the dermatomal uh, uh, pattern of the common peroneal nerve, where it is going. So it's on the uh, anterior lateral aspect of the leg. And the points to be prickled are UB39, the GB34 classical, and a point just one centimeter posterior to GB34, also known as the posterior GB34. In addition to that, for the common peroneal nerve, we will also be doing prickling at the uh, on the uh, common peroneal nerve and along that pathway I've shown the red dotted spots where you will also be doing the prickling. Then the superficial peroneal nerve point for sciatica, ankle pain and neuropathy. You can see the distribution of the superficial peroneal nerve on the left hand side of your screen wherein the distribution is shown on the dorsum of the foot and the acupuncture points to be prickled are gallbladder 35, gallbladder 37, gallbladder 39. In addition to that, you can also prickle along the pathway of the superficial peroneal nerve, which is shown with the yellow dots on your right hand side of the screen. Then the deep peroneal nerve point, for ankle pain and for neuropathies. Uh, now we have shown on the left side of the, uh, of the screen, you can see what is the uh, distribution of the deep peroneal nerve. And on the right hand side of the screen, the acupuncture points to be prickled are stomach 41. And in addition, you will also do prickling along the pathway of the deep peroneal nerve, which is shown with red spots, red dots. Then the posterior tibial nerve point for heel pain, which is very, very effective. A lot of patients come to us with heel pain and it's very difficult to do needling there because it's a very painful process. And a lot of time, uh, it will be difficult for even the patient to be able to tolerate. 
and i have found that uh, by using the simple tool of uh, pnst i can get amazingly quick results and we can see immediately after a session that the patient is able to put his foot down on the floor without feeling pain so the basic pnst protocol has to be given in all such patients and in addition to that you do prickling at the points kidney 2 and kidney 3 and you also do prickling along the pathway of the posterior tibial nerve which is shown as the yellow uh, as the uh, red dots on the picture on your right hand side then the sural nerve point for sciatica and heel pain again it's uh, you can see the nerve distribution of the sural nerve which is along the ub channel uh, uh, which is on the left hand side you can see of your screen and the point to be prickled for uh, heel pain is ub60 and you you will also need to prickle along the pathway of the sural nerve which is shown as the red dots on your right hand side of the screen then the superior cranial nerve point for back pain this is again a very common problem in our practice and the point to be uh, prickled is the extra pound yao yan which also we use in our acupuncture practice but here we don't need to do any needling we just use that tool and prickle the exact point and you do in a round fashion in a circular fashion prickling at that point i'll be showing you that also in the slides which come forward and you can also see on the screen on your right hand side the area of the superior cranial nerve so you'll also be prickling locally along the pathway of the superior cranial nerve so you will prickle at the acupuncture point in additional additional you will also be prickling along the pathway of the nerve then the middle cranial nerve point for back pain we are going to use ub27 and you can see the point on your left hand side of the screen ub27 and in uh, rather than using a needle we'll just do prickling with that tool on that particular point acupuncture point and also along the pathway of the middle cranial nerve which can be seen as the red dots on your screen on the right hand side so uh, basic pnst treatment prickling of the uh, point ub27 and prickling along the pathway of the middle cranial nerve then for the thoraco lumbar fascia point for the lumbar pain again a very common problem for lumbar pain we have a lot of patients who come to us a low back pain even after a strain or a sprain you just need to and as a matter of fact if you are traveling sometimes and you have forgotten to keep your tool in your pocket you can just use a toothpick and see the miraculous results which you can give to your uh, 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 you know family or people traveling with you by just doing prickling at that zone with this particular uh, uh, method of treatment and the points to be prickled are the points ub52 and pigeon we know it's an extra point and in addition to that you can see on your left hand side of the screen i have put those uh, red dots which show the thoraco lumbar area where you will also be doing the prickling locally now another uh, important uh, area of concern where we all uh, as practitioners see patients every day and this is another area where a lot of patients who would come to us will not get commensurate relief with acupuncture and sometimes the needling and these areas can be quite painful for the patients so a very good alternative for such conditions and i would say now my 70% of my practice now is converted into pnst over a period of time earlier i would treat all my patients with just needling now i treat 70% of my patients with just pnst because the results are i would say miraculous so the point to be prickled uh, acupuncture point to be prickled for a piriformis muscle spasm is the point ub54 in addition you can also do prickling along the pathway of the piriformis muscle Uh, and uh, uh, the area which i have shown in the with the black dots is the area we, where we also will be doing the prickling now how do you confirm the effect of pnst next question which will come to a scientific mind because professor nagata himself was a neurosurgeon 
he left his practice of neurosurgery 15 years ago, developed this method, and now only practices PNST and has taught thousands of uh, uh, students all over Japan. I'm lucky to have been one of his students from India, and uh, he has uh, given me this mantle of popularizing this science globally now. Now, uh, how do you confirm the PNSD effect? So whether or not the PNSD treatment actually induced a parasympathetic response has to be evaluated from immediate responses as well as the long-term effects. So immediate response with the patient often experiences will be immediate pain relief, a sensation of warmth in the area where you treated, a slight sweating sometimes, salivation, lacrimation. A lot of patients will say we're feeling very relaxed, sleepiness, and some patients may have some bowel movements also. But by and large, the experience is great and very relaxing to the patient. When the parasympathetic nervous system becomes dominant, the blood circulation improves. Thus, patients will immediately experience pain reduction and improvement in the range of motion. And for long-term improvement, we have to evaluate the patient's symptoms and also determine the individual's stress level by using blood parameters like a neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, also known as the NLR ratio. So uh, long-term effects you can uh, evaluate by not only with the patient's symptomatic improvement, but also we can determine by uh, uh, using the NLR ratio. I would like to share what an NLR ratio is and you as medical scientists and practitioners can also use this as a tool to find out how much your patient is improving. What is NLR stressometer? NLR stressometer means the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. So if you do a CBC, uh, you will be able to see in a patient, in an individual, what is the normal ratio of the neutrophils to lymphocytes. So a normal ratio of neutrophils to lymphocyte in a healthy person would be one to three. Once that ratio starts increasing and reaches from six to nine, it indicates mild stress. Don't think of it as a stress of the mind only. It is a stress to the body, which means if a patient is suffering from a mild disease, the stressometer or NLR ratio would be in the ratio of six to nine. When this same person goes to a very acute stage of a disease, the condition falls into a moderate stress, which comes to the ratio of 9 to 18. And when the same ratio goes above 18, the neutrophil to lymphocyte, this indicates severe stress. I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, patients with COVID, today we are all uh, going through this uh, COVID issue. If you see their blood reports, you will find that the neutrophils are almost 80 to 85 percent and the lymphocytes are just about 8 percent, which means the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio is almost in that range of 8, 9 to 18, right? So it's about 10 times. So that means the body is going through moderate stress. And these are the patients whom I have found with my study on such patients are the ones who are going through a cytokine storm. So at the time that, and this is mostly seen between day eight to day 11 of the disease. And at that time I have found blood studies of these patients when they have been done. And I've been following not one, many in my family and my extended family. I've always found that this ratio is above 10, which again confirms that their bodies are going through moderate stress. And uh, once their uh, uh, cytokine storm, gets, uh, storm starts getting better, their ratio starts falling down towards normal. Now, I would come to the treatment of some of the commonest diseases with PNST so that you, as I was saying to you in, in the beginning also, you can start using this tool effectively right away. So one of the commonest problems which you can easily treat in your practice would be a bruise. Suppose somebody in your staff or somebody in your own family has a bruise and you want to give him relief from pain. So rather than using a needle, just apply prickling stimulation spirally centering in the area of pain. So you can see that uh, 
small tool which I am using. So I am starting the prickling from the area of the bruise and going in a spiral fashion around the area. Then you make the patient walk and see where the patient's pain is left. And wherever the patient's pain is left, you will prickle the remaining painful area again. And we also know that our calves are supplied by the S1 and S2 dermatomes. So we will prickle the first and sacral foramina as well, the zero points. So as I said to you before also, the very simple thing, uh, and this is acute problem. So acute problems, you don't need to do the basic PNSD treatment. The, you can just do the uh, dermatome treatment and followed by a local treatment. So dermatome treatment will be S1 and S2 dermatomes prickling and the, in the dew channel level, the zero points, what we call it, as per Dr. Nagata's and doing prickling locally. And you can do this initially for twice a day and keep the area warm. Then ankle pain, acute ankle pain, you prickle the painful area again in a spiral fashion, as I have shown there. And this hardly takes not more than a half a minute, maximum one minute to do local prickling on the area. And then we all know by our knowledge of dermatomes that the ankle is supplied by the L4, L5, S1 and S2 dermatomes. So you will prickle the corresponding lumbar and sacral dermatomes on the back as well. Then tenosynovitis or inflammation of the tendons. You can do prickling evenly at the site of the pain and tenderness, and you will also prickle the corresponding cervical zero point, which is the C6 dermatome. Then osteoarthritis of hip and knee. We again all know very well that this is a very common problem in our practice. So rather than reading, doing needling, you can see the amazing results of using PNST treatment and get great results. So osteoarthritis of the knee can be dealt with by doing a combination of local prickling stimulation and also hair dryer treatment. I'll be talking to you about this hair dryer treatment, which is something which has been again developed by Professor Nagata himself. And he uh, professes that uh, this treatment should be advised to the patient for home use. So at home also, the patient can use this treatment and it will give uh, even better results. So prickling treatment also helps with knee effusion and people with osteoarthritis of the hip also report that prickling stimulation on the lower back, buttocks and groin area makes it easier for them to get up from a seated position. So you can immediately see the result when a patient is prickled on an area of pain and after the prickling itself, if you ask the patient to get up, they find that they're already feeling much better, which is great because we have got uh, uh, to make the patient feel the result Im immediately. And that gives a very big psychological uh, well-being feeling also to the patients. Then for the knee pain, I would like to uh, show you uh, on the knee, which is the area we will prickle. I have already explained to you the saphenous nerve pathway, which is the area A. So you will be prickling along the pathway of the saphenous nerve. And you will also be prickling around the knee joint area locally. You can see on the right hand side, I'm prickling locally around the knee joint. And on the left figure, I am prickling along the saphenous nerve pathway. And we also know that the knee is supplied by L3, L4 and L5 nerve root dermatomes. So I will also do the prickling of the respective zero points in the back. So that uh, completes the treatment. So first you do prickling along the saphenous nerve pathway, area A. Then you do prickling around the knee joint, which is the area B. And then you also do the knee uh, uh, treatment in the nerve root dermatome at the back at the level of L4, L5 and S, L, L3, L4 and L5 on the zero points. Then plantar fasciitis and neuropathy. Again, treating numbness is uh, much more difficult than treating pain, we all know. But to my uh, experience with PNST, we can get great results. Even with diabetic neuropathy, I've found the results to be amazing. Again, plantar fasciitis again uh, is a problem where it becomes very difficult to do any local needling. And I have even tried a tung uh, pattern on tan patterns of acupuncture. I have not had great results, but with PNST treatment, the results are amazing. And the prickling needs to be done along the nerve pathway, which we have shown there. And we all know, in addition to that, the sole belongs to L4, L5, S1 and S2 dermatomes. So you will prickle the corresponding lumbar 
and sacro zero points on the back as well and you will get amazing results then carpal tunnel syndrome the problem i suffered from and my wife uh, who is also a doctor of acupuncture with me and she also practices with me for the last over uh, 30 years she was the one who treated me for this and she prickled along the median nerve pathway in the region of the hand the numb and painful areas of the palm and the fingers we all know belongs to the c6 c7 and c8 dermatomes so you will prickle the zero points of the corresponding cervical vertebrae and the results are there for us to see then for migraine again a very common problem in our practice and suppose you are traveling and you find somebody who is having a problem of headaches you don't need to do any needling you can just use your tool carry that tool with you all the time in your pocket and you can uh, win many friends so you apply prickling stimulation uh, along centering around the pain area and see where the patient still has pain and then you prickle the remaining painful area again then occipital neuralgia again you apply prickling stimulation along the dotted lines at the base of the skull as shown in this figure then cervical herniated disc between c6 and c7 so for treating a cervical disc you prickle at the prickle at their level of the herniation then you prickle the tender area and it feels painful first when when you prickle it but as you keep on prickling the area the pain will dissipate why because there is an increase in the local blood flow then pain and stiffness at the back of neck and shoulders you apply prickling spirally along the acupuncture points at the cervical huato giaji points the medial ub line the points si13 14 sanjo 15 gallbladder 21 and ub14 and you can also prickle along the cervical zero points then pain and stiffness on the side of the neck a tight sternocleidomastoid muscle and the scm points which i have already told you before also coincides with the si16 acupuncture point so you prickle this point and you can give immediate relief in the neck stiffness then lower back pain you can apply prickling stimulation spirally along the area of pain you also prickle along the lumbar points and you finish the treatment with hair dryer therapy and you can also use hot shower therapy at bath time and for acute pains you can use this protocol twice a day now uh, medical disorders where acupuncture uh, pnsd treatment can also be uh, very useful uh, i am just el elucidating one condition here but whenever we do plan with e lotus a uh, full weekend webinar we will be covering up each disease and explaining to you also how we do pnsd in each of the diseases to get great results so allergies bronchial asthma atopic dermatitis the prickling uh, to be, is to be done at points kidney 23 24 25 26 and lung 2 and for acute asthma attacks you can do prickling at li4 and ren 22 then difficult diseases like rheumatoid arthritis collagen disorders and parkinsons you do prickling on the fingers jingwell points head and the face using the basic pnsd treatment which is very effective for difficult diseases one time uh, uh, once a day treatment is sufficient and with prickling on the painful hands patients with rheumatoid arthritis often feel warmth on the face makes them relaxed and similarly they feel better with prickling stimulation at the wrist and the knees and when there is a painful area it is fine to prickle the area each time it bothers the patient it is advisable to include some heating therapy like a hair dryer and hot shower to these uh, classical therapy also constipation can pnsd can be used as a very important aid to induce bowel movement just prickling stimulation is applied on the abdomen around the navel in a spiral clockwise pattern and we can continue prickling in this manner until the patient feels a sense of bowel movements in their abdomen prickling at the s2 uh, sacral foramina point acupuncture point ub32 is also strongly recommended then what is uh, heat therapy or hot shower therapy is nothing else but you are normal hand shower if we use in our washrooms you can set the temperature up to 50 degrees celsius if you don't have a setting up in your system you can just take the uh, normal uh, uh, heat to a level of your toleration apply the hot shower on and off in a pulsing movement to the affected area when the area becomes a bit red you stop the therapy hot shower is effective in conditions like pain in legs feet knees low back conditions with worsen with exposure to cold like rheumatism collagen disorders urogenital and spinal cord disorders 
Then hair dryer therapy. If we all have hair dryers at home. Hair dryer therapy is uh, it's like a heat from a hair dryer is applied to the affected area. It supplements the PNSD treatment and can be applied to any painful conditions like knee pain, a low back pain, shoulder tightness, a frozen shoulder, a cervical pain, a piriformis muscle syndrome and hip arthralgia. It is also very good for numbness. And numbness, we all know, is often due to poor blood circulation. So warming the area encourages the need needed circulation. And Dr. Hiroshi Watanabe, again, a surgeon from Japan, also studied acupuncture and taught the effects of kidney to acupuncture point. And he found that when he stimulated this point, it immediately got patient to get relief from his soreness in the throat. And so you can also apply hot shower at the acupuncture kidney two points. Steam towel. This is a very good method which Professor Nagata talks about a lot of putting a steam towel over the eyes. And he says you can microwave a wet towel, put it over the eyes until the discomfort goes away. And this is very good for dry eye syndrome and this stimulates the lacrimal glands and is useful for dry eyes, strained eyes and gritty eyes. Now I would like to go uh, to a video which I will be showing to you now on the uh, 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 basic PNSD treatment, which will show you all the points which we will be doing the prickling with. So we start with jingle points, lung 11, LI1, pericardium 9, triple warmer 1, SI1 and heart 9. Both the hands you will be doing. Then points around the eye. UB1, UB2, UIO, extra point, gallbladder 14, triple warmer 23, GB1, stomach 2, stomach 2.5, stomach 3. Now on the other side. So it has to be done bilaterally. Again, UB1, UB2, UIO, GB14, triple warmer 23, GB1, stomach 2, stomach 2.5, stomach 3. So in all 18 points, nine points on each side. Then points around the nose. Bitong, both sides, LI20, both sides, DU25, the tip of the nose, and SI18, both sides, which makes a total of seven points. Then points around the mouth. Points to be prickled, prickled are DU26. 26.5, LI19, both sides, stomach 4, that was REN24, and then stomach 4, bilaterally. Then a point just under stomach 5, and a point SI17. Again, both sides point below behind uh, stomach five under and as point SI 17, 11 points in all. Then points on the side of the head. Gallbladder four, five, six, stomach eight. Then make a line from the external occipital protuberance to send your 20. And points are GB10, 12.2, GB19, triple warmer 20, GB8, and GB9. And now draw a line from DU16 to GB12 and prickle GB20, GB12.1, GB11, GB12. Four points. 
Similarly, you do on the opposite side also, both the sides. So again, the same points, GB456 and stomach 8. Then a line from the external occipital protuberance to the Sanjaw 20. I've shown that line now. And prickle GB10, 12.2. GB19, triple warmer 20, GB8 and GB9. Then on a line from DU16 to GB12, you'll prickle GB20, 12.1, 11 and GB12. Now coming to the top of the head. The points we prickled are DU20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And three centimeter lateral on both the sides of this line are the points GB18, 17.5, 17, 16, and 15. And this would be done on both sides. So again, I'll be prickling GB18, 17.5, 17, 16, and 15. And then on the back of the head. The points we prickled are DU17, DU18, DU19, and then 3 centimeter lateral, GB18.8, 18.5, and GB18. And then on the other side also, GB18.8. 18.5 and gallbladder 18. That completes my uh, video. Uh, thank you, Donna, for uh, inviting me today. I hope uh, everybody's enjoyed the presentation and uh, these are my contact details and I'm now looking forward to questions. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me, Donna? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Um, there are people asking questions, though, in the chat room, if you want to answer. Oh, in the chat room? Okay. Also under Q&A. So can you please repeat the three steps? I missed them. Which three steps? Okay. The treatment, three steps. Oh, so first is the basic PNSD treatment. Second is the dermatomal treatment. And the third is the additional uh, treatments. And obviously, uh, uh, you will get all the details of the three treatment steps I have talked about in the notes printout also. Does the prickling cause any bleeding? There is no bleeding at all. And that's the best part of this therapy. And let me tell you, uh, with a practice of more than 38 years of acupuncture behind me, I also was initially not very uh, sure whether this simple a method could be so effective. But as, as they say, practicing only can tell you how good a method can be. And I have found it to be great. How uh, can you show the tool again? Uh, well, surely I can. Uh, I come onto the screen. This is the tool. Uh, yeah, this is the tool. I can even bring it close to you to be able to see the tool, all right? So the original tool was made of titanium. Now we are even uh, making a stainless steel tool and it's equally effective because it's a tip which is most important. It needs to be sharp so that the patient actually feels a prickling sensation at the point. Then where do you get the tool? Uh, well, you can order it from Japan, uh, but we have also now started manufacturing because we have a lot of my students 
because we have been teaching acupuncture for the last 15 years in India to medical graduates. Uh, so we have a very big platform of uh, students. My uh, wife does uh, courses for medical doctors. So we've already trained about 400 doctors plus in India who practice acupuncture. So they are the ones who, to whom I've already uh, been training where, uh, the PNSD treatment. And so since they required it, so we got it made in India. And this tool is now available to us also. And the cost obviously will be much cheaper when we are going to send it to you because of the costing which comes to us, which is much less. Are you comparing neutrophil percentage to lymphocyte or neutrophils to lymphocytes? No, we are comparing the neutrophil percentage to lymphocyte percentage. How do you treat, teach patients to treat themselves with a toothpick? Uh, you can teach them, but ideally uh, better would be that uh, you do the treatment yourself. Obviously, if there are patients who are unable to come to you regularly, you can teach them or you may have to actually ask one of the family members to do it because suppose the patient requires to be treated the lower back, he cannot do that on his own. So you will obviously have to, uh, but how are you cleaning the tool in between patients? Very simple. We would be uh, using a spirit swab to clean the tip and use it again on next patient. So we are using it, uh, uh, using all the uh, methods of sanitization. And now in the COVID era, in any case, we all wear our gloves and use sanitizers before treating any patients. No jingwell points on the toes? No. Uh, Professor Nagata, when he developed this technique, uh, he said uh, to only trickle the jingwell points of the hands. Is the technique to press once? Yes, it is a technique to press one only, but uh, when uh, the exact method of uh, doing it can be explained more better on a patient. So it will be great if eLotus could organize a weekend webinar where we can show a lot of live uh, uh, conditions also being treated successfully with uh, prickling. And we can show videos of patients being doing uh, prickling. And then you can probably understand the uh, method of prickling much better. But as I said to you in your uh, uh, slide also, we have shown it that how we can do it. Can you say again for plantar fasciitis, please? Yeah, plantar fasciitis, we said you can do prickling locally in the area of pain. Then you can prickle the uh, sacral one, two, three, which is the area from where uh, the dermatome pattern is coming from. And that would be giving you great results. What is the difference between uh, PNSD and acupuncture, much, much different. In acupuncture, you use needles, where in PNSD, you're not using any acupuncture needles, no needles at all. How many times do you prickle each point? Just once. As I said to you, the total treatment session never lasts for more than five minutes. Five minutes also is an extra time because uh, you are talking to the patient during that time and you can see the commensurate results, particularly in acute conditions, almost instantaneously. Old lady having continuous constipation, how quickly can you help? Yes, in such type of patients, you can actually give them a toothpick and explain them that they can do prickling locally around their abdomen, around the navel. So they can go on doing prickling around the navel in a circular fashion, in a spiral fashion, and sitting on the, uh, 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 sitting on the um, um, uh, you know, uh, to toilet pod itself, and they will start feeling the gurgling immediately. That quick the result can be seen. Results in frozen shoulder. Very good result with frozen shoulder. And we have done many patients. Here we would also like to add that where, uh, there is another tool which Professor Nagata uses, which I also use in my practice. These are known as body needles. They are micro needles, which are placed after the treatment session at specific acupuncture points and zero points also. And obviously since the uh, duration of our talk today was just one hour, we could not have enumerated on that, but these are additional techniques. And these are also made by uh, uh, in Japan, these needles, and we use them very often. And they also help in getting great results. How firm is the pressure used with the prickling? The pressure is quite firm. And because we really make uh, need to make the patient feel as if there is a prickle being done. So it is firm. 
how long do you stimulate each point and how many times in a session we only stimulate once that's it do you have a pnsd manual for purchase uh, please write a mail to me and i will let you know uh, uh, how to go ahead with purchasing of this it's very simple how much pressure needs to be applied for prickling it's a very uh, firm pressure but it's to be applied there so you can the patient will just feel as if uh, somebody has prickled there so the word is prickle it's not pickle it's prickling so you feel as if somebody is give, given you a sharp uh, touch that's it in acute patients did you say we could skip one of the three steps or was it just for a bruise dr kapoor no in acute case, cases you can uh, avoid the basic pnsd treatment which is the first step and uh, you can go and with the go ahead with the dermatome treatment and the local treatment how often the patient has to return for treatment uh, depends upon the uh, chronicity of disease in most of the chronic patients we call them three times a week as they get better we reduce it to twice a week and uh, much better once a week and acute conditions we call them every day or maybe about a week or 10 days and then go on reducing the sessions can we purchase a tool from your website definitely any protocol for tinnitus definitely we are treating tinnitus also and uh, uh, hearing hearing loss also with pnst and all those protocols will definitely be there when uh, we have a full weekend webinar because it's a huge science it's a very big system of therapy in itself today because it was a basic uh, introduction to the system so i have covered up and tried to cover up as much as possible but we have protocols for all disorders like for example we will be having a protocol for eye diseases we will have protocol from ear disorders for gynae disorders everything pnst pnsc is a prickling neurostimulation technique where can i purchase hiroshi nagata's heal yourself you can purchase it on amazon uh, uh you can order the tool from me itself that's not a problem you can just uh, uh, send me an email and i'll be able to let you know what is the tool called is known as a pnst tool if the treatment is not successful can you tell if it is because the condition is resistance or the technique is incorrect i think uh, by and large they have found it to be uh, uh, successful on most of my patients if it is not successful obviously there could be so many other factors like diet and uh, professor nagata talks a lot about diet in his uh, book so and i would also be talking about the diet part once we uh, do a full uh, webinar on a weekend and we can also uh, find out if our treatment is successful or not by doing the nlr test and that also gives us a lot of indications do you want to cause bruising or avoid bruising i didn't get it you want to no the pnsd tool doesn't cause any bruising whatsoever absolutely no bruising do nerve pathway points vary by patient since anatomy slightly differs amongst no the dermatome pathway points are the same so once you know you have knowledge of anatomy is strong you will be exactly prickling at the right dermatome points you cannot go wrong that's why when we do these uh, dermatome uh, identification of each dermatome we'll be doing a live demonstration uh, in, in a paid webinar or a, a weekend webinar of each point specifically so that you understand because in a, in a short period you cannot uh, show the demonstration for each so i'll be telling you how you will be doing prickling at c2 dermatome c3 c4 dermatome and so on till all the dermatomes are covered same way on the face when we are prickling the dermatomes which particular nerve root are you prickling so that's very important because when you are scientists and when you are people who are into the system for such a long time you would like to know exactly what you are doing and then you can explain to your patients also better what exactly you are doing if neutrophil count is on the higher side and lymphocyte on the lower side it means more stress yes doctor any protocol for the cataract of the eye uh, not really i don't think i am treating cataracts with uh, even classical acupuncture or for that matter uh, pnst can e pnst be used for essential tremors yes and which area do we uh, prickle uh, as i said to you the basic pnst treatment protocol is enough for the parkinson's disease and uh, 
I've had great success with Parkinson's, particularly in patients who have got uh, duration of illness is less than one year. Results are very, very uh, enterprising. And I have shown you the entire basic PNSD protocol in the video. That is what is to be done in almost all the central nervous system disorders, collagen disorders, chronic rheumatoid arthritis, autoimmune disorders, just the basic PNSD. Are there conditions that you still prefer to use acupuncture or are you full converted to? A very interesting question by Oran. I have known this gentleman greatly. I have, I'm practicing also the science which he practices. And uh, we prefer to use uh, PNST only when we find that the patient's uh, general chi is very low and all, we might be using uh, moxa, cupping and all the other techniques, guasha. But by and large, I prefer using PNST. Can this method be applied in thyroid disorders like goiter? I have not done it. Dr. Kapur, this would be our last question. Sure. Uh, auricular treatment effect with your metal pointed object? Yes, we can do it. But uh, Professor Nagata doesn't talk about ear acupuncture to it, the points to be used. And what is, why is the nerve root of the Dumai and not the what is GIG? Uh, the nerve root, because the actual origination of the dermatome is from the zero point. Thank you, Dr. Kapoor, for a great much. webinar today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the class and you learned something new that you can apply into your practice right away. Um, we know it's really late in India right now. So thank you so much again, Dr. Kapoor, for taking the time to be with us today. Today's webinar has been recorded. So if you guys want to watch it again or catch any parts that you've missed, it will be available on our TCM Wisdom Tube as well as our YouTube tomorrow afternoon, starting tomorrow afternoon. That's it for today, everyone. Thank you so much. And we will see you at the next webinar. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you very much. Bye. Oh, thank you.